Hey ever guys, welcome back to Nesquik's ingenious, ginormous, genuine animations. It's your host, Nesquik. Anyways though, now before we get into it, I want to talk to you, my child audience, about all this amazing merch I have, predominantly backpacks and other stupid shit kids like. But beyond that, I have a free merch giveaway. All you have to do is send me a picture of your feet with my name written on the sole. Be sure to get it as detailed and graphic as possible. Don't ask why, don't tell your parents. But anyways, back to the story. So one time I was... Hey, hey everybody, glad you could summon another the video from me. Now today we're gonna be looking at a theory I have on the Storytime Animation community. Now first off, what is a Storytime Animator? Simply put, Storytime Animators are independent content creators that use animation to tell usually short, little relatable stories about their life or some bullshit they went through or whatever, right? Now, cards on the table here, folks. I am not a fan of Storytime Animators. They honestly feel like people that just kind of have very watered down content that's kind of trying to be relatable too hard. Essentially, these are sellouts. It's just kind of the long and short of it there for you folks, right? I'm also going to talk down to you like you're six because you're a normie piece of trash. And of course, in terms of their audiences, well, uh, let's just say these people are very popular with babies. But I'm not just here to solely shit on these people. I promise. Instead, I'm here to share a lovely theory with you. Now, follow me on this. This is Illimation, a perfectly adequate storytime animator. Usually, after a new video of hers is put out, after a week it gets about a million views. Pretty standard stuff, no problem. However, last year around this time, she put out this video, which only got something like half a million. Which is, I mean look, half a million ain't fucking bad, right? But dude, I went to public school and even I know, that ain't a million. And then the next video did poorly too. And then the next video. And then things started to kind of recover a bit. But it's kind of weird. Like, why did her audience just up and abandon her for like a month and a half? And then I took the bold step of actually watching her video. And I noticed this. Oh, it's cute, Illy. You think YouTube cares? Uh, no. Looking at this video, to Illy's credit, this is a video that discusses uh, basically mental health and her panic attacks. And it's a very serious video. You get the Nesquik seal of approval. However... The Nesquik seal of approval does not mean YouTube approves of it. So what I think is very obvious is that they algorithmically demoted the hell out of this video, right? I guess the, the big muckety mucks over at YouTube were like, you know, this person having a very serious discussion is fine and all, but we're not gonna be able to sell the audience Tostitos pizza rolls after this, so fuck it, we can't show this video to anybody. And thus it was hidden. And there's several other story team animators that have the same thing happen to them, where one video, they're getting great success above and beyond their sub count. And in the next video, crashes down. Maybe still pretty good, don't get me wrong, but nowhere near what it was, and sometimes it then crashes again. You see this a lot, especially in the last year. So this got me thinking, why is this? Now look, when it comes to the overall fading of the storytime animation community, there are three big reasons. One of the big ones is that this is just a fad that has faded. Look, all styles of content eventually fade, so it was inevitably going to happen here too. Uh, another reason I think is just, let's be honest, these people are way too homogenous. And don't give me that bullshit excuse that, oh, we're in the same genre as one another. Fuck you. Don't fucking lie to me, dude. You, you, know, you can lie to yourself all you want, dude, but don't lie to me. Yeah, yeah. M movies like Alien and Paranormal Activity and Zombieland are all in the same genre, but would you ever confuse any of them for each other? It's not like they had the same kind of music, the same kind of tone, the same kind of humor, the same kind of topics, the same kind of perspectives. Oh, wait. It's like these people are fucking lazy. We'll get to that later, by the way. But no, 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 these would explain organic losses of views. Why are we seeing sharp declines? Now, in order to answer that question, we have to go back. So, get ready, folks. We're going back to the past here. Hey, dude, what the fuck? You just landed on my fucking car. I just got that. Whoa, whoa, dude, dude, dude. Shh, shh. It's okay. It's okay, dude. They put Minecraft Steve in Smash. Oh my god, oh my god, oh my god. <gasps> okay, good. I think we got rid of that idiot. All right, here we are, folks. Now get hyped. It's 2015. The reason why I brought us back to this time is because something very important happened here. Leafy was here. What do I mean by this? Anyone who knows their internet history knows that around this time, 2015, even 2016, Leafy's here started to experience a very notable decline. Him and a few other more controversial YouTubers like Onision. And the running theory is that these people were algorithmically throttled behind the scenes. Essentially, they experienced the first kind of wave of censorship as we kind of saw it roll in here. 
problems. Since there was no sign of Leafy stopping this behavior, YouTube went behind the scenes and flicked a switch and caused his channel to go downhill all of a sudden. Now here's my theory on this. Let's say you're YouTube. First off, go fuck yourself. But secondly, you are trying to get rid of dangerous, controversial, unadvertiser friendly content from your website. You can get rid of people, you know, slowly suffocate them, right? But that's not going to keep people on your website. They'll just go wherever the other people are. They'll just stop watching your videos. So here's what you do. While you're demoting somebody, you promote someone else. You see where I'm going with this? My theory is that while they're putting their hands on the scale against certain users, they were lifting up other users, in particular storytime animation, which rose to huge prominence around this time. I think The Odd Ones Out, who's the most famous of all the storytime animators, went from 10k subs at the beginning of the year to a million subs. That is pretty astronomical. And I suspect the whole community experienced the same thing as well. Now look, I want to make something very clear. I'm not saying these people are talentless, although some of them are. I'm not saying these people don't work hard. Most of them do. I'm not saying these people don't have a lot of organic, real fans, but I believe that they are being artificially boosted beyond what they naturally would have gotten. They're being astroturfed in essence. But here's where things get a little interesting. YouTube's generosity only expands so far as you are useful to them. And here's the problem. YouTube in recent years has bring in more and more mainstream media and more and more just out and out intolerable content to its platform supplanting the natural and independent creators that would have been on here. This includes the story time animators. Essentially, they are running out of uses for these animators. They don't need them anymore. And so because of that, they're starting to pick them off one by one. They're getting rid of the smaller channels first. They have less production values, less people will miss them. It's more likely if you're subscribed to one of them, you're gonna be subscribed to one of the bigger guys as well, which seems to be how the community works. So basically all these small people and medium sized people are expendable. And you're starting to see YouTube is now only playing favorites with the big boys, the people that can still get on trending. And that is what causes these sharp cutoffs. The algorithm abandons you. So that way you're down to just kind of your normal audience and that eventually fades with time. That little thing with Illimations, by the way, I believe her video got her entire channel kind of blacklisted. Uh, here, uh, for, the, for the fucking smooth brains at the back, let me put it as simple as possible. When it comes to story to animators, Anywhere between a quarter to a third of their audience that they usually get are only watching them because a robot told them to do it. Sad shit, but eh, what are you going to do? Now, coming back to the present, and no, I don't want to do another fucking transition in the bathtub, so just, just pretend like we just walked here, okay? Once again, back here, the end of 2020, beginning of 2021, I think it's increasingly apparent that the community is going to die off very shortly. Now, like, I hate to see independent voices get snuffed out, especially by greedy algorithms and suits that don't know what they're talking about, but I'm going to be honest. A lot of these storytime animators have it fucking coming. Not because I don't like their content, not because they cater to children, not because they're selling out. No, no, no. The reason why is actually very simple. They're a bunch of followers. Once again, a lot of hard work goes into the average storytime animation video, probably more so than even my videos, to be fair. But just because you put a lot of effort into your video doesn't mean that it's fucking good. and doesn't mean that it wasn't a safe thing to do. As I mentioned earlier, the fact that these guys are also similar to one another shows you how little people are willing to step outside their comfort zone. You know, they just follow what's popular. They, they followed what was popular to success, but a middling level of success and a very temporary and fleeting one. You know, they don't have that kind of entrepreneurial, go out and, you know, try something new kind of spirit, you know? And, and hey, feel free to prove me wrong, folks, but the most I've seen you guys do is move over to TikTok. So why do good girls like bad guys? Wow fucking epic. And that's the thing. The storytime animation community is a beautiful little paradox. It is a group of very creative people that have all come together to do the same thing as one another. <laughs> it's quite interesting. But you know what? Unless these people adapt, they're going to die off. And hey, that's on them at this point. So look, that's kind of my little crazy theory about how all this works. I'll be honest, this is a video I've had in the works for like a year at this point, kind of studying the data, compiling things, you know, putting together my thoughts. I don't know. This is the stupid shit I waste my time on. Anyways, I hope you enjoyed the video. Hope to see you in the next one. Talk to you later. Bye. And before I go, well, we're coming back at you this year with some of the world's best bundles. So get them while they last. Buy that merch. Buy that merch. Buy that merch. Buy that merch. Buy that.